on the campus of Carleton University. Welcome to MNP Park and this edition of American Ultimate Disc League action for the Ottawa Outlaws on Rogers TV. I'm Mike Nellis, your host right here at MNP Park and we thank you for joining us for another edition of Rogers Sports Exclusive. Well, the Ottawa Outlaws uh, pretty much off a very nail-biting loss last night in the hands of the Montreal Royale in Montreal, one point loss last night. So they're looking to avenge that, run the table for the remainder of the regular season and break and enter into the AUDL playoffs. Taking a look at the standings for the Eastern Division, the Toronto Rush with a big win over Ottawa's opponent, the Philadelphia Phoenix for this game last night, the Phoenix 0-7 and the Ottawa Outlaws right in front of them in fifth place at three and six. We now welcome Steve Trainer, the color commentator to the broadcast. Steve, thank you for joining me on the pregame show. And we are first going to highlight a very serious injury that occurred last time here on Ottawa Outlaws Ultimate on Rogers TV when the Outlaws player Dan Renault uh, took a hard fall. Yes, absolutely. Paul Renault was having a fantastic game and a fantastic season for the Ottawa Outlaws. He had a, uh, a, a big jump uh, with a lot of people underneath him on a, on a floaty pass. Fell hard, had a grade three concussion and a fractured, and we see it on the highlight here, he comes down, fractured collarbone, bad concussion. Luckily, he is resting at home, and he's, uh, he's on the f road to full recovery, and we're very happy to hear about that. And here's the slow-motion replay of that. Reached up to get that disc. He went really high up to get that and then came down hard, but it's good to see uh, that there is no real serious injury on that play. Now moving to players to watch and starting with the Philadelphia Phoenix, it's Matt Carter. Yes, uh, the big lefty, number 44, Matt Carter. His coach, Sam Morgan, said that he has uh, been a guy that's been very good on this road trip despite a very tough loss to Toronto last night, and he'll be counted on in the, in the wake of uh, some of the star players for Fe uh, Philadelphia being out of the lineup. Moving to Ottawa now, the Birdman, Carl Wazo is our player to watch. Yes, he's been a guy that we've had our eyes on for quite some time. He's uh, Carl has been an excellent player uh, for the Outlaws the past two seasons. He's really stepped it up. The last uh, game that we televised against Montreal, he was a force to be reckoned with. As we thank you for that, Steve, those are our players to watch as we tee things up. Stay tuned as the opening poll of this AUDL matchup between the Outlaws and the Philadelphia Phoenix is up next on Rogers TV. This program is brought to you in part by Gabriel Pizza, home of the bigger, better pizza. Gabriel Pizza, 310-7777 or GabrielPizza.com. This program is brought to you by the Ottawa Sun, where real fans turn for sports news. Ottawa Eats. Make sure you check it out on Rogers TV. Do you want to talk about it? Talk about what? We're not a couple, but we act like one. For the first time in my life, the future is hidden from me. I am frightened of what is to come. There's been a terrible accident. All children. 43, you know. 44. Call one triple eight rogers one to order. Meet the authors of some of your favorite Ottawa novels. Ellie's Read on Ottawa, Wednesday, 7 p.m. Back to Keith Harris Stadium at MMP Park on the campus of Carleton University. It's the Ottawa Outlaws hosting the Philadelphia Phoenix and Dan Mooney alongside Steve Trainer, Mike Nellis down at field level and a really cold, cold June 11th afternoon here at MNP Park. 
nine degrees right now and with the wind it's probably about three or four degrees cooler these guys have got their work cut out for them because that wind is brisk well dan the philadelphia phoenix picked a bad weekend to arise from the ashes and come to ottawa it is very very cold out there and uh, well, most of the warm-up was, uh, you can see the wind here, it's, it's incredible, which is going to be a factor in the game. Uh, definitely it's going to be uh, who it's going to be a positive factor for we don't know yet I know both teams have been trying to stay warm and they're ready to to get things uh, kicked off we see Carl Loiseau here he's one of our players to watch he's had a fantastic season he's at uh, 38 goals now this season and he'll be counted on uh, uh, to lead the team uh, today to a victory here comes the opening pull Philadelphia will start off with the pull. The big seven and going against the wind, they're not gonna get much on that opening pull as Ottawa will start off with great field position here. That's Matt Hogle out there. Hogle with a low throw that Mike Lee was able to grab. No, referee Glenn Ford deems that the disc did indeed touch the turf. The beauty of professional ultimate, no talking, no dis dispute, just down call by the ref and we move on. Philadelphia in control of the disc. That was Matt Carter in there. Disc comes back, Stephen Shaw. And there's another example of what the wind is going to do. It's going to be turnover after turnover today. You expect to see a lot of long points, Steve? Absolutely. Unfortunately, that, that throw by Keelan Wave was an example of a great thrower and a great cutter in Leon Force No. And they weren't able to connect because the wind was too strong in their favor. So it's going to be tough uh, what, either way that you're going. Either you're going into the wind like Philadelphia is right now, or if you're Ottawa and you've got the wind at your back, you've got to make some nice sharp passes with good spin. Nice throw inside. Carter looking deep. Got his man. Now Philadelphia. It's Brian Magger. Magger drops that off for Ken Wells. Wells still with it now. Getting close to the seven second count. Wells lets it go. Nice grab there. Steven Shaw with the first point of the afternoon. What a play upwind for the Philadelphia Phoenix. And they are coming off one of, oh, here's the beautiful throw by k Dub Ken Wells. Great throw into the end zone, great catch and celebration. They are pumped. And the reason why they're so pumped is they had an awful, awful game last night against the Toronto Rush. They were defeated 28 to six. Ow. And that was, that was a spanking. We, taught, we had the chance to talk to uh, their head coach, uh, uh, Sam Morgan, before the game. And he said, no matter what happens today, they've got their, their mindset on going out and playing the best they possibly can. And they're having fun with this. They don't have a full lineup here tonight. They're missing some players uh, due to a, a, a wedding that's going on for one of, the, one of the key players here. So they're doing the best with what they've got. And they've got to love that first, first point. Ottawa without the services of Derek and Ken Alexander today. And of course, Paul Renault, a big loss as they start upfield here at MNP Park. Nice grab inside, there's Russ Nichols. Nichols looking downfield, and you gotta love Mike Lee, wide open, catching the floater to tie things up. Well, nothing like a quick uh, strike point up the wind to just uh, show Philadelphia that this is gonna be maybe a little bit harder than they thought. Uh, they only had about five to 10 seconds to think about it. But here's a great throw by Russ Nichols up the line. Mike Lee, we've seen him do it all year, makes great cuts to the corners, is able to tow the line and catch it inbounds and, and uh, catch it before the wind grabs it. Nice job by Mike Lee and nice throw by Nichols on that play. So well, we got the pull here. We've got Andy Corey. Now, Andy Corey is averaging about seven seconds on his pull. So that when he pulls, throws the disc to the opposing team, it stays in the air for about seven seconds. We'll see what the wind does. If it's longer or shorter, it's Brick. definitely going to go further. Further. Brick. Actually, it dives in. And Philadelphia starts out. Here's Carter. 
Carter looking deep right away, looking downfield for Magger once again. Disc goes up, and nobody comes down with it. Good defensive play there by Andy Corey. Looks but like he did draw the foul. That's right. And uh, the Philadelphia player is fine with that. He went up. Good uh, effort by the Philadelphia player. Andy comes in and plays some hard defense there. There's a turnover. It's Philadelphia. Almost had a, a wonderful answer to Ottawa's tying up point. Here's Nick Boucher looking downfield well behind Andy Corey. And there's another example of how that wind is not when it's even in when it's in your favor, it isn't necessarily in your favor. I like that play by Nick Boucher, though. I mean, uh, it's it's a punt down to the other team's uh, 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 side of the field, and it forces them to move it all the way up the field rather than turning it over on the line. Shaw sends that back. That's going back in. Yeah, this uh, was almost a Callahan on that. That was a, a pass, and the wind just took it and. and uh, closest player to it was an Outlaws player, so they'll look to strike here as they're right on the end zone line. To take the lead, big catch there, Nick Boucher, and Ottawa leads for the first time this afternoon with 8.52 left to go in the opening quarter. Nick Boucher be nimble, Nick Boucher be quick. Nice cut to the corner there and a great grab on a, on a quick bang bang play after the turnover. It's always when you turn it over in your own end zone line, regardless of the weather, it's always really, really hard to have to deal with, uh, you know, uh, transition defense and getting back on your man. And on that play, with all the cold weather and the quick turn there, Ottawa was able to quickly grab it and punch it in the end zone before Philadelphia had a chance to set up defensively. It's three be... minutes and eight seconds for the first three goals of this one. The over-under from a very reliable source before the opening pull was 21. Well, you know, Ottawa has actually been an interesting team. They actually have not uh, held any of their opponents under 20 the entire season. Uh, they're offensively, they've been gifted, uh, but defensively, the, the challenge has been keeping another team under 20. So we'll see if they can do it here with the, with the win conditions as a factor. Another long huck that will be broken up. Andy Corey with it. Corey lays that up for number 19, Bryce Ring. All the way around, great grab to keep it alive by Luke Phelan. Phelan looks to his right, finds Lance Blackstock. Blackstock. Back for ring. Or make that number 29, Cooper Brotman out there. And now another long huck. Ottawa looking to come down with it. Nick Boucher up, Blackstock up, Blackstock dives. And a great grab there. Luke Phelan laid out to catch that loose disc in the end zone for the goal. Oh, Luke Phelan, the crowd is going crazy here. What a jump ball here. We call this the O-hip because someone might get hurt on that. Gets tipped by Nick Boucher and Luke Phelan finishing the play, following the play. And that's what you got to do. What a great play by Luke. Luke uh, has been a, a valuable member of the team uh, in the Ottawa competitive scene for over 10 years now. He's been an excellent defensive player. Hasn't got to play as much as maybe he would have liked this year, but with the injuries and the absences of Team Canada members uh, this game, he's going to get to play a lot, and he's stepped up and had a great play right off the bat. Great job by Luke. And he started that play 30 or 40 yards back before he ended up diving to catch that perfect layout and who had a chance at it? Boucher had a chance at it. Blackstock had a chance at it. And finally, Luke Phelan came up with it just as the disc was hitting the turf. Carter for Philadelphia. Sends that one out for Frank Harris. Harris back inside. Harris gets it back. Harris, the overhand. Here's Carter. Carter, the lefty, throws that one, and there's a turnover. Carl Wiseau, our player to watch, the league leader in points. Spins that one, and here's Mike Lee going into the end zone looking for O'Brien, but it was too far, and another turnover. I've seen Mike Lee make that pass all season long, but the wind was a factor on that. It's blowing out away from the, the uh, in, inside of the, the field, and it pushed it out of bounds. Carter in his own end zone. Swings that one out. 
Philadelphia going deep once again. Caught there by Kevin Ken Wells. Wells out for Carter. Carter the lefty. The throw down. Great D, but it pops right back into the arms of Pavel Karavaya. Pavel's going to take that one. That's excellent. Way to finish that play and follow up. Here's the throw. Out by uh, Carter, who we highlighted before the game. And Alec Arsenault, who made a very athletic play there, wasn't able to catch his Ds. They say, you know, from co coaches will say, catch your Ds, it's never a bad time to catch the disc. On that, it was just so high in the air when he when he tapped it. Didn't have much of a chance on that. Unfortunately, with the wind, stayed up, and Pavel was able to come down with the catch. His first goal of the afternoon, Karavayev for Philadelphia. And Philadelphia is the head coach Sam Morgan is a player, as is assistant coach Aaron Roberts, coming off a, a loss as debilitating as it could have been last night against Toronto when they come in here. What are, are just are they looking for positives now, Steve? Or is I think uh, what Morgan was talking about before the game was he just said, you know, whenever you suffer a loss like that, it's a it's a real gut check. So you have to decide what what you're going to be about if you're, you're going to go and sulk about it or you're going to play hard. They've decided to come out and play as hard as possible, and they're already a quarter of the way towards their point total from last night. So uh, with the win, they, they're in this game. They're going to they're going to make it interesting. We see a zone here right now. It looks like a one three uh, one two. And they're, they're just trying to put as much pressure on the disc as possible and make Ottawa throw a lot of passes. Ottawa moving the disc around very nicely. Great catch there to keep the disc alive. That was Matt Hogel. Leon Foreno for Kieran Way. Keelan Way. Wide side of the field, Russ Nichols waiting there all alone. Dishes that off. Kinley G. Spreads that out. Matt Hogel hit with a shoulder by Kevin Liu. Wow, that was an aggressive hit. Um, Liu helps him up, but definitely he was, yeah, he just must. Must have uh, lost his balance on there, wasn't able to stop properly. He runs right into Hogel and apologizes immediately afterwards. Getting close to the seven second stall. Had to get rid of it. Jeff Bevan takes off. Kinley G. Double team. G inside, another turnover there. Despite the best effort. Kinley G got hung out to dry there, didn't have much to throw at, and uh, ended up getting stalled down on that play. Philly going deep once again to well out of bounds. The problem with punting in deep is if you don't keep it in bounds and it never comes back in, then you're going to give it up near your own end zone line. That's what happened to Philadelphia on that play. Ottawa leads 3-2. 4.45 left to go. And there's a point. Nice catch by Kinley G. And a bit of a selly as well. Young Kinley G, he's uh, about to represent Canada at the, at the World Juniors uh, this summer. And he is filling up for the loss of not having Derek Alexander in the lineup tonight. Expect him to get more touches. And couldn't help but notice that Keelan Way, he's usually a receiver and a continuation thrower, is coming to the backfield and, and kind of filled in for that pivotal role that Derek plays uh, against the zone. And uh, just really had a lot of touches and a lot of good throws on there. As well, we saw Matt Hogel with a very nice catch on that play on a very hard, hard pass into the ground. And he also was able to uh, maintain his composure after, after getting fouled pretty hard there and getting the disc right back into the middle of the field, which is what you got to do as a receiver and a, as a handler. So Ottawa will give the disc away. Four minutes, 44 seconds left to go here in the opening quarter in Ottawa in control of this one but steve is this one that they should have had control over this is definitely one they should have had control over the the weather just based on the the, the opponent's record of 0 and 7 in the game they had last night 
both teams are coming off of games last night and uh, and definitely Ottawa should be maintaining some control in this game but with the weather it just adds another factor and you can't take anything for granted because Philadelphia does have some good throwers and they've got some receivers who are not scared to go deep. As they are doing right now, will the disc come back into play? No. The pass intended once again for Brian McGurr. Deep threat already. They've used him three times successfully. And he's pretty good in the in the air. He's, he's getting the some of the, the toughest uh, matchups, but they have to keep it in bounds whenever they throw it to him in order to give give them a, him a chance to catch it. Alec Arsenault takes big advantage and Ottawa now leads by a score of five to two. One of the advantages of having such great coverage by Rogers and ESPN uh, for the AUDL is you actually get to scout your opponents more than in the past. You used to have to actually play them in tournaments in order to see what they've got. And on, on it seems to be, uh, there seems to be a set play for the Outlaws whenever they get it near the end zone line. Uh, where they're having uh, on the defensive turnovers and the goal transition offense, Nick Boucher is, is uh, being a bit of a menace in the end zone there, and it's, it's working out in Ottawa's favor. Philadelphia already having difficulty answering. Uh, they did open the scoring, but then Ottawa came back with three successive points. Philadelphia got one more. Now Ottawa has just scored their second in this run. Yeah, and we can trace it back to the fact that they Philadelphia is going to try to play the long game. That's totally fine. But if you're going to punt it down the field or you're going to huck it down the field, you've got to keep it in balance because what they're doing is they're turning the disc over with no chance of catching it, and they're giving it up near their own end zone line. That's an easy score for Ottawa. Out there, Alex Lowy. Here's Frank Harris. Harris just dishes it off. Stephen McGurr. Another turnover as that pass in behind the intended receiver, Riggs Moeller. Colin Froats out there. Connor Brotman. Brotman forced to dish it off. Andy Corey. Back for Froats. Froats for Brotman. Continue to use that trio. There's a pass into the end zone that Andy Corey just unable to get off the hat. And really quick, nice quick pass by Matt O'Brien. He did everything he had to on that play. It's just the wind took it and uh, he threw it. I would have made that, uh, suggested he make that throw every single time. Great spin on it, good throw, but he just could not capitalize on that. Just got over Andy's head. And again, Philadelphia attempting to go long for KW. Ken Wells goes up, but better defense there by Nick Boucher. Excellent positioning by Nick Boucher. Good good hawk, good run by the, the Philadelphia Phoenix, but Nick Boucher with some great shutdown defense there. Ottawa now moving the disc up the field. There's another long throw, the pass in behind O'Brien once again, and despite his best effort, was able to get a left hand on it, but his momentum carried him too forward, too far forward too quickly. Contact infraction indeed on that play. Uh, Philadelphia will move the disc up 10 yards. Another long huck attempt by Philadelphia. And it's a long game, that kind of stuff when you do that too much, too often, too early, kind of can have a tendency to wear you out a little. Especially if you're the one that has to run after it all the time, for sure. I mean, hopefully they're going to be using a number of different receivers because running deep all the time without any success on it is going to get pretty tiring for some of the Philadelphia receivers. Great catch there by number 16, Laurent Loiseau. Brotman out for O'Brien. Intercepted by Lowy. Lowy, the big guy, the nice forehand picked up there by Stephen Shaw. No play. Great layout there to keep it alive by Ken Wells. And the pass inside for Stephen Shaw. 
And Philadelphia gets on the board again with a minute 15 left to go in the opening quarter. It's 5-3 Ottawa. Philadelphia is still hanging in there, still hanging around. Obviously, uh, from the enjoyable offensive ultimate we've been able to see, we've seen a lot of scoring this year. Uh, not as much scoring in this quarter because just the wind is a huge factor. But Philadelphia managing to take advantage of that by staying close. Offensively, we have they have some good throwers. They have some good uh, uh, cutters uh, that like to go deep and can make good cuts in the end zone. So they're going to try and focus on those strong cutters and uh, keep them uh, uh, on on the disc as much as possible and try to stay as close as possible to, to Ottawa here. Ottawa's got an important uh, offensive point here. And as we said before, no Derek Alexander, no Ken Alexander in the lineup tonight. So they are relying on a number of different players to come in and step into the lineup, either playing their first game or just playing more minutes than they're used to. And they're all quite capable. One of the things about Ottawa is they're a wonderfully deep team in terms of talent and skill. Ottawa in possession of the disc. Here's Keelan Way. Back out. Kenley G moves it around the horn. Jeff Bevan inside Kinley G back outside Mike Lee he moves that up Leon Foreno Mike Lee for Kinley G and Kinley G wearing his 55 this year the last time I got a chance to see him he didn't have his jersey and forgot it again here's Carl Wiseau into the end zone wide open Mike Lee easy point Ottawa it's the way it should be done. They, they knew they had to come and, uh, and s step on it and, uh, and, and score a quick point. Instead of uh, being a one-point game, it's now a three-point game. Nice execution here. Mike Lee, you know, having great field sense, being right at the front of the end zone and catching it there. Um, another example of guys that we're seeing get a, getting a chance that haven't gotten a chance this year, we've got Jeff Bevan. That might have been his first point of the whole season. He's been on the on the squad the whole year. He gets out there, and he's playing zone in a, in a, in a wind like that, and he's getting a scuba over the top thrown to him. So good on him to catch it and keep his composure. And uh, I love how he was playing a nice complimentary handler set with uh, Kinley G. He's got all the confidence in the world. Looks like the pull's gonna be come from Nick Boucher. Nick also very good at the pulls. He's throwing into the wind here, so it's gonna be a bit of a challenge for big lefty. Boucher gets pretty good distance and gets a nice float on it, landing right into the hands of Matt Carter. Foster. There's a block there. block coming from Carl Wazo's younger brother Laurent also a former basketball player was trying his hand at, at the game of ultimate it's a couple of seasons in and shows lots of promise Carter lefty nice throw down inside Caravaya move that over and there's the long overhand directly into the hands of Kenny Wells what a play Wow, what a throw on that play. And you cannot be scared when you're handling in the wind. And there was no fear whatsoever on that hammer throw. Here it comes, right up, over the top. How do you do? No way for Nick Boucher to play on that. I, I Nick Boucher could not have thought that that was coming up over the top with that wind. But just a really nice throw uh, by Phoenix. Uh, and uh, that pass coming from Ken Wells or K-Dub as he's called by his, uh, his teammates. And he's he's definitely, he's a, a guy that they're looking to to use in the, on the offense quite a bit tonight. As we said at the, off the top, uh, Philadelphia is missing some of their top players. It's made the game last night very challenging and it's made the game, uh, it's making the game a little bit challenging today, but they're managing to stay in this game and stay tough with a good Ottawa squad. Ottawa with 10 seconds left in the quarter to get a quick point before the break. Prevent defense here, some zone going on to make sure they don't get in the end zone. Keelan Way sends that one in for Laurent Loiseau, or Carl Loiseau, he goes into the end zone and a penalty called well back by referee Glenn Ford. Receiver traveling. Yep. So Philadelphia has to get this disc. They only have 1.5 seconds left. The big goal is, oh, it's going to come back to Ottawa. 
So Loiseau's pretty much got to go into the end zone right here. Yeah, no time for dump. You got to punch it in as soon as it's checked in. So they're going to try and isolate at least one player here for the for the pass. <laughs> Guess who gets it? Kinley G. Just as the horn sounds to end the first quarter. Ottawa in control of this one here at MMP Park. They lead the Philadelphia Phoenix by a score of 7-4. Don't go anywhere, folks. More professional ultimate on Rogers TV after the break. This program is brought to you in part by Gabriel Pizza, home of the bigger, better pizza. Gabriel Pizza, 310 7777, or GabrielPizza.com. This program is brought to you by the Ottawa Sun, where real fans turn for sports news. Wednesday's daytime where we will be joined with local honey producer honey she'll be here and talking about honey from our region and we have Monic Warrick from Polo in the Park and some peeps from Global Shakers community. Do you call me honey there by the way? I did. Oh I like that. How about this? We're talking engagement rings with Paul Perot. That's fun. No stress there. And a Mommy and Me Princess High Tea. Wednesday at 11 with repeats at 2, 5 and 11. Cable 22. Welcome back to Keith Harris Stadium at MNP Park on the campus of Carleton University. Ottawa Outlaws lead the Philadelphia Phoenix 7-4 after the opening quarter of play here in the American Ultimate Disc League on Rogers TV. Dan Mooney, Steve Trainer, Mike Nellis and our entire Rogers TV crew so pleased to have you along for the ride and all kinds of... <laughs> Real big highlights on a on a quite inclement day in that first quarter, Steve. Well, the weather and the wind is a factor, and we were really worried about uh, the level of play here, but there has been quite a few highlights that we can pull to. That catch by Luke Phelan on the continuation was beautiful. The, the tip on Alex Arsenault's D to catch it in the end zone, and Ottawa showing a little bit of flash and dash on the zone offense. There was quite a few good plays made by both teams. Kyle Wells was very strong for Phoenix in that first, uh, for the Philadelphia Phoenix in that first half, and Kinley G really led the offense for the Ottawa Outlaws. Kinley G with two goals in the opening half to lead the way, but the scoring uh, for Ottawa pretty good. Mike Lee with a couple as well in that opening 12 minutes. Well, if Philadelphia continues to put zone on on the defensive side, people like Mike Lee are going to have to be the continuation passes, and they have to make sure they make catches on very tough uh, throws that are affected by the wind. And Mike did that in the first half, and he'll be looking to continue that and pick up the points as we move on. Ryan McGurr drops the disc. Turnover for Ottawa. Andy Corey. Corey looking into the end zone. Great grab for the point. Matt O'Brien makes it 8-4 Ottawa. Absolutely pivotal point here in the sec uh, second quarter. Philadelphia with a chance with the wind at their back to make it uh, tighten up the score again. And a uh, quick turnover, a great throw by Andy Corey. That is so hard to make that throw. It's a very simple throw without wind, but when the wind is in your face, it's very hard to step out like that and make that throw and give it a lot of time uh, for uh, O'Brien to run underneath it. Good throw by Andy Corey here. He's going to be a factor as we move along in the game because he's uh, pulling on defense, and he's also a guy that they look to handle the disc when there's a transition D. Matt O'Brien, a late addition to the Ottawa Outlaws lineup just before the opening pull here. He was inserted into the lineup by the coaching staff, and 
making that decision look like a good one. It's a mass unit down there. I mean, people are getting hurt in the warm-ups because it's so cold out here. I mean, we're just, you know, we're used, we, we kind of got spoiled. We thought summer was here, but now it's down to nine degrees. And I think that's a generous, uh, generous nine degrees on the, on the forecast. Carter, great disc, great catch. Carter gets it back. Luke Phelan right on him. Oh, big turnover by Lowy. Into the end zone for the point, Laurent Loiseau. I think that was a very, very tough uh, point for Sam Pezek on that play. So uh, he has the unfortunate turnover on that play. As soon as the turnover is, is made, he falls down trying to stop the continuation pass. I think he needs to have a chance to get back to the sideline and uh, and uh, and uh, you know just regroup from that. That was not a good point for him. 7-4 at the quarter. Pretty low scoring in consideration of... Uh, what we've seen so far this season in the AUDL, Steve, but I mean, you're, you're playing on beautiful days today. The weather is really showing its teeth. I mean, I think we saw more turnovers, some of them intentional, just punting it down for yardage than we have seen in, in the entire halves in, in, uh, in other games where the weather's a lot better. So we're, we're going to look to see uh, if Ottawa can continue this run. They seem to be pulling away from feet. Philadelphia here. Philadelphia are really struggling with the disc. A lot of confidence. If they're not getting uh, points on big hucks, they don't seem to be able to make those second and third passes. Here's another one. Devin Foster looking deep. And Brian McGurr couldn't catch up with it. Andy Corey. Manages to stay in bounds. And the block there by Stephen McGurr. Stay on the guy. Ottawa takes advantage of it, trying to catch Philadelphia, napping Arsenal with a great grab, or Nick Boucher, rather. Excuse me, Boucher with a tremendous catch. Bryce Ring into the end zone, Laurent Loiseau again. Carl's younger brother, Laurent, Laurent Loiseau, with a great grab on that. What a good throw here, out to space. Great defensive bid by Philadelphia, but Laurent with a good positioning, was able to grab the disc, and he's happy, happy that he's able to get into the lineup today and able to contribute. There's no better feeling. And the entire bench of Ottawa, they've been in a lot of tight games. They lost a one-point game last night in, in Montreal. There's no better feeling when you're not in the starting lineup to know that your team is rolling and you're going to get in the lineup with, with some uh, some points. See John Hag and the coaching staff moving people in and out of the lineup, keeping everybody fresh and keeping them warm and playing guys as much as he possibly can. To... Another person that we are seeing play the first game this year is uh, Craig Froakes. Craig has a brother, Colin, who's been playing the last two years with the Ottawa Outlaws. He's the older brother of, of uh, Craig. And Colin actually uh, was the head coach of the Outlaws la last year while recovering from ACL surgery. He's now back. This is his first game, and he's already been a factor with some good defense and uh, some good offensive plays as well. Here's Matt Carter. Dishes that Zato. off. Long throw, hoping it comes back. It does not. And another turnover by Philadelphia. They're starting to stack up. Boucher. Boucher, forced to go back to Laurent Loisel. Out for Craig Froats, down for Boucher! No! Boucher lays out, but comes up empty. Boucher is all over the field today. You just can't help but notice him. He moves. Faces the toughest players when he's playing defense, and on offense, they're looking for him all the time. He nearly runs this down. You can see the wind just move it down very, very quickly. Unfortunately, can't come up with it, but a good play uh, by the Outlaws. Good strategy. 7 seconds stall. 
doesn't look good for Philadelphia when it's that deep in their own territory. Frustration from the handlers. They didn't see anybody open. There was some very, very good defense by the Outlaws on that play. And now Ottawa gets to take it on the line with Colin Froats. Froats, little flip for Mike Lee. 11-4 Ottawa. Sam Morgan's going to be talking to his, uh, his line there and saying basically, look, we've, we're forcing to one particular side of the field. So if you're marking someone that's trying to score in the end zone, you give them one particular side that they're going to beat you on. You cover the other side that you, the, your teammate is helping you to cover. And unfortunately on that, there was a bit of a bid, uh, too much of a bid by the defensive player. He got deeped out of his pants by Mike Lee there. And Mike Lee cut back to the open side and caught it for the score. Five straight allowed goals by Philadelphia now, Steve. Yeah, they're in a huddle and head coach Sam Morgan's trying to get his message across, but they're down seven with 8.40 left to go in the opening half. They're yeah. gonna be able to come back. Oh, well, we'll, it, uh, we'll take a look at the recent streaks to kind of answer that question. Ottawa has a three and six season record. They have a favorable schedule down the stretch against non-playoff teams. Minus 40 on the goals for against differential. Their O-line conversion rate is about 58% and the total conversion rate offensive and defensive line is about 42. Philadelphia, it's been a tough season. 0-7. They've been beat. Uh, they had a beat down in Toronto last night, 27-6 loss. They're minus 76 for goals for against differential. Conversion rate on offense, uh, the whole line is only 47. The top team in the division is at 79%. So you compare how much more efficient the old line is for the Toronto Rush. So to answer your question, do I think they can come back? I'm a little skeptical. <laughs> but I do, uh, I was really impressed by the coaching staff and the team uh, meeting them before game because they have the right approach. They are in it for the long haul. If they don't have great results this year, that's okay. They've got a lot of young players that they're building on. And Sam Morgan's got a lot of experience playing in the Philadelphia area. He's going to be able to continue to recruit good players coming out of university. And the beauty of uh, playing in the States is if you need more players, you need more athletes, go to the flag football field. Go to any of the other football fields where these guys are finishing up 18, 19 years old and looking for the next challenge. That is a breeding ground for good good athletic talent that you can, you can pick up from. Not uh, as easy to do in Canada with a smaller population, especially if you're coming out of Ottawa. So that's why we need to rely on good junior programs uh, developing uh, a smaller set of players. Only serves the game to attempt to grow it. Absolutely. And that's what is happening in the Ottawa Carlton area. Ultimate is just growing in leaps and bounds. Carter to the sidelines. Long throw. Great grab there. Stephen McGurr. That throw was very good too. Well defended by the Outlaws. They made them throw it up there on an angle. It had to be a perfect throw. Goes up over the top. Nice bid uh, by Brotman, but he can't come up with it. And McGurr with a good catch on that, that play. Two McGurr brothers, Brian McGurr wearing number five. And there's Steve just getting on the board for Philadelphia. So it's a... Uh, it's, a, it's definitely a, one of those games where you're going to take the small victories here if you're Philadelphia, and that, that play was good. They, they definitely moved it down the field, and they used the wind to their advantage, and can they replicate that when they get the chance again in a couple of points? Uh, on defense, uh, I liked what they did with the zone. They were doing a couple of different zones. they got to keep trying that. When they do get the opportunities, they got to try and make Ottawa make as many throws as possible. Looks like a man-to-man -man here. Frank Harris right there. Nice grab. Leon Forêt, no, for Carl Oiseau. Oiseau inside. And the easy touch or easy goal there by the Ottawa Outlaws. They moved the disc down beautifully, didn't they? Great fake by uh, Carl Loiseau on that play. 
but the real save on that play came from Leon Forsno. Uh, so essentially, Philadelphia played really, really hard for seven seconds. The whole concept of we're going to make sure we take away that force lane. Seven seconds of hard D. They thought they had it, and the disc bounces right into the hands of Leon. who goes break to Carl, and, and they're off to the races. And that's just the way it goes. Uh, that defensive strategy looked a little bit uh, more competitive than what they've shown in the earlier in the second quarter. A little more aggressive. A little bit more aggressive. That's what they have to be. You know, the wind is is going to be an issue, but Ottawa definitely has the, the advantage when it comes to skill. So if you can't make uh, make them make uh, skill errors, try and do some time pressure errors and be a little bit more aggressive, as you said. Carter. Moves that one in. And Wells. Flash it, flash it. Four. Ryan McGurr. Back inside. Disc is broken. Play on. Here's Carter once again. Come on, Nick. No under. Nick, no under here. Stephen McGurr forced Carter back. Good defense by Ottawa. Not allowing Philadelphia to move up the field at all. Timeout called by Philadelphia. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. If the disc is broken, uh, they they definitely should have called that, and definitely looked like there was uh, some breakage in the in the disc for sure. Like we said, it's very cold out now, so it was a hard catch. It must have uh, snapped the disc in some way. The timeout is called. It's going to give uh, Philadelphia the time to come up with a strategy, maybe put their best scoring players on the field here. See some players out there wearing the gloves i would think that everybody on a day like today would want to wear the gloves but you see some players out there barehanded it's got a sting that disc has got a sting on the end of a very cold finger yeah it's it's a it's a tough right some people swear by it it's very very popular amongst uh, emerging and young players some of the old school guys it's kind of like uh, do you wear batting gloves when you're you're playing baseball some of the old school guys in the 80s and 90s just refused to, to give it a chance and now it's just commonplace that everybody's got it and finding people uh, without batting gloves is, is very rare and I think more and more players are playing with it in cold weather and also some just really get a lot of comfort and stability from it you know if you've got sweaty hands in the summertime you see more uh, more and more players at the highest levels playing with gloves as well so after Philadelphia's timeout They need to get the disc off the line as soon as possible here. Back in, Stephen Shaw. Tried to go down for Carter, another turnover. Ottawa starts out now. Brotman inside for O'Brien. O'Brien for Lance Blackstock. Back for Brotman to the outside. Bryce Ring. Ring throws that one in. Nice grab by O'Brien. Ring looking deep. Everybody moving. Out for Andy Corey. Andy Corey for O'Brien. Just too far. Wow, when you lay out like that, you just hope you can come down with it. It makes it that so much re more rewarding when you can catch it. Here's the throw out to space. O'Brien, great layout bit on that. He did not have a good angle to work with, and he made the best with what he had there. Philly going deep once again. Will that disc turn back into the field of play? It will not. Yeah. So one adjustment uh, the offense is going to have to make there uh, on Philly is even in the timeout, they weren't able to get it back into the middle of the field. And with this win, you can't go down the line. A, you're going to throw it out of bounds. B, you're going to get it intercepted. Or, or C, uh, your handler going downfield is going to get rocked by somebody trying to make the defensive play upfield. I noticed that Nick uh, Boucher has been poaching deep as a center fielder, if you will, uh, in the backfield when the, with the uh, wind facing them. And it's a very effective strategy, and Philadelphia needs to know that they can't throw the Hawks if Nick Boucher is already sitting back there waiting to, to challenge on some of the smaller receivers. Just uh, too much of a size advantage. 
Yeah, exactly. And then Philadelphia definitely has some size, but most of them are doing the handling. So the guys that are running downfield are running a lot, and they're a little bit shorter. And Ottawa, uh, which always has uh, some size challenges against some of the bigger teams, is actually enjoying the height advantage in this game, and they're going to continue to use it. Lots of rave reviews from the new turf here at Carleton University. Players are really liking the the, uh, the cushioning aspect. It's a lot easier on uh, these and other joints. Yeah, it's uh, it, it definitely looks like uh, everyone is, is is running out well there. They're able to make their cuts. And that's really what you need. You need the cushioning and support, but you also need to know when you have to make a tight cut that the, the, the grass and the, the what surface makes up will, make will. up the surface has the integrity to allow you to do that without any injury. Ottawa again. On the verge of scoring. Kinley G with the disc. For the Ottawa Outlaws. Looking for their fourth victory of the season. Keelan Way. Way inside for Loiseau. Great defense there by Eric Liu. Nice long huck once again. Looking down for Karavayev. Oh! Almost came up with it. Big throw on that and a good run, but they unfortunately weren't able to come up with it. Lots of hits and misses with the win today. Here's Carl Wazo. Eric Nardelli all over him. Ottawa moving the disc up nicely. Leon Foreno all the way down the field. And Matt Berg went up for it, unable to come down with it as Eric Nardelli was there to make the defense. And he's a, another big guy out there for Philadelphia and has certainly made his presence felt almost immediately since being put into the back into the game. Yes, and he hasn't played a, a lot this year for Philadelphia, but they're very excited about him. He's young, he's talented, he's big, as you said. He's doing a really good job of playing some honest defense against uh, Carl Loiseau, who's arguably outside of Keelan Wade, the toughest guy to shut down on a one-on-one -on -one basis here for the Ottawa Outlaws offense tonight. Kinley G's pass, caught by Keelan Way back for G. Bobbled it, got it back, low throw, scooped up by Matt Hogle. Hogel inside for Leon Foreno. Hogel, little floater for G. He had to wait for it, was able to come down with it. Frank Harris, 55 on 55. Inside, Bevan. Bevan, looking to the end zone for the point. Matt Berg. Uh, my heart goes out to the, the Phoenix on that play. It was uh, there was a long point, a lot of turnovers. Uh, by the end of it, it was Keystone Cops. It was uh, there was people not picking up other people, uh, people wide open on passes. Kinley G had a disc that stayed up there. He was waiting to catch it. His defender never even came to pick him up, and that allowed uh, them to quickly move it up and score on the break side. And good goal for Matt Berg. He's been an excellent player at least for the last eight to ten years uh, in the Ottawa competitive scene. Just a, a, although he's not a, a bigger guy, he's always been really good at running deep and catching in the air. He's got great hops as well. Uh, you know, there's a lot of guys like that at the professional level, so he he has not been able to shine near, not nearly as much as he had in the in the club scene. But it's good to see him play so well today and uh, be able to catch that. You said that uh, it was a long point. It was the longest point of the afternoon thus far. Four minutes and 16 seconds between points. Another turnover by McGurr into the end zone. Mike Lee, his fourth goal of the game. When it rains, it pours sometimes. And uh, no, it's it's still just cold. It's not actually raining yet. But unfortunately for Philadelphia, just some unforced turns. And nice break throw here. Philadelphia defender trying to cover both sides. And you can't do that against skilled throwers like that. Mike Lee, great nose, nose for the end zone. He just uh, knows where to go, and his, uh, his throwers have absolute confidence in him that he's going to be able to catch it. 
Ottawa's third straight point as they began to pull away from Philadelphia as the second quarter began reeling off four straight points to open the second quarter and really not uh, not give Philadelphia much room to really realize what had just happened But this gives you a good example of the level of skill at the professional ultimate level already now, you know, that we're five years into professional ultimate. This is a, Philadelphia is a professional team. They practice, they play, they play college, they play whatever they play in the off season for, for other clubs. Uh, and they're out there against Ottawa Outlaws and, you know, it's not going in their favor right now. Let's, let's be honest here. So if you're sitting at home and you're running your league team and you're wondering how would you do if you played against the Ottawa Outlaws at the Toronto Rush or the Montreal Royal, you're going get, to get to see what it's, it's like out there to play against a, a team that's, that's well-oiled and has a lot of skilled players at the professional level. Shaw tried the hammer. Philadelphia believed that they had possession. There's another long huck down deep. Shaw on defense, and the disc just got away from Jordan McGregor. That was a great throw by Andy Corey into the wind there. Another long huck that Philadelphia can't catch. They, they, I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to make up some ground as quickly as they can, but uh, it would seem that uh, a more disc control type offense might be a little more successful in the long run. Yep. And, and maintain a little bit of gas in the tank. I think that's what they're gonna talk about the halftime, say, okay, we tried the huck and, and, uh, and make a game of it. Now we're actually gonna work on playing what it's like to play in weather like this. Cause you can't always control the weather, especially at the professional level where all the games are outside. So they need to learn how to play in this kind of weather. I know Ottawa always faces that challenge whenever uh, they play at nationals, club nationals, uh, and they go out to someplace like Winnipeg or the Prairies. The Prairie guys, they, they know how to play in the wind. Uh, or the people out on the coast, they know how to play in the wind. Ottawa, we don't get as much wind, so it's a challenge. So when you find yourself in a game like this, focus on the fundamentals and focus on being able to play uh, you know, with the wind and against the wind and be able to throw through it. Rotman for Ottawa. Wanted to go back for Bryce Ring, but Ring couldn't come up with the disc, and it's a turnover Philadelphia now. Kenny Wells throws that down, and that goes off the hands of Riggs Moeller into another Ottawa possession. Brotman wide open in the middle is O'Brien. O'Brien has McGregor breaking, and a timeout called by the Ottawa Outlaws, and they're going to get the disc back at midfield. Great field position, and now John Haig gets to set something up. Gets to set something up and gets to put the players that he wants there on the field. There was quite a few turnovers there. So I'm sure John's going to tell them as they're coming off the field that they did a great job on the defensive aspect. And he knows that they could have scored in this point, but he wants to increase his percentage. And, you know, they're coming off. The, the situation that Ottawa faces here right now is they need to win. Uh, to get in. They need to win all their remaining games in the regular season in order to have that chance of being the third place team that makes it to the playoffs. They know they've beaten the DC Breeze who are comfortably in second place. And we look here at the team leaders. We've got Carl Loiseau with 28. He's added to that today already. The assist Keelan Way also added that. He came into the game with 34. Nick Boucher, the, the team leader with 12 uh, defensive uh, turnovers created. Uh, we see that uh, there's a couple of other guys that have really stepped up on the defensive side today. Wind, of course, a, a factor which has helped that. But, uh, you know, we've got some, some high numbers compared to when we look at Philadelphia. Philadelphia, you know, they've had a lot of transition on, the, on their roster. And they're, they're challenged. They're challenged for the continuity. They're challenged for the skill level. Ottawa needs to uh, focus on what they do as a team here and play really well because the next game is not going to be as easy as this one, and they need to be able to be sharp and be focused in their next games. Win and get in. If they don't, they're, they're going to be watching the playoffs from, from their respective homes. Again. Again. Ogle. Pass for Keelan Way. Way. Kinley G, Mike Lee. 
way. Inside, nice D there by number 21, Aaron Roberts. And Matt Hogle is down for Ottawa. And that's a big concern because Matt Hogle was named to the Canadian uh, National Masters team for the World Championships in London, England and he will be playing in them next week. So you don't want to see him injured. Hopefully he'll be able to walk off the field and get some physio. You don't, hopefully it looks like it's something related to the leg. Looks like he got his left, the top of his left foot stepped on. <laughs> Not fun, but there could be worse things that, uh, that could have happened on that play. Defensive hustle play by Philadelphia on that play. There was no ill intent uh, by the Philadelphia player to to strike Matt on that play. It's just a bang, bang play. And uh, he's talking about it with the with the training staff right now, telling them about it. And he's got, he gives the fans the thumbs up to let, let everyone know he's gonna be okay. Into the final 30 seconds. Carter, of this first half. Eric Lou back for Frank Harris. Harris. Nardelli had to go up for it. Now, nice low throw inside for Stephen McGurr. McGurr looking into the end zone just over the head. The, def the defense really is the, uh, the eighth defender out there. I mean, wide open. Not, nobody in between the thrower and the, and the receiver. It's just the wind just picks it up and takes it away from him. And... Uh, Unfortunately for them, they they aren't able to capitalize, and only two seconds left. So it looks like it's either going to be Ottawa's turn to score or or nobody's. Nobody's. So the Ottawa Outlaws coming out with a depleted roster, but they come out and they lead the Philadelphia Phoenix 14 to five after the first half. Steve, your thoughts on that first 24 minutes of play? Uh, you know, unfortunately, as expected, uh, great for the home team and great for the home fans. Uh, um, and definitely, they, they, they played well. They did what they had to do. And uh, they, they definitely, uh, I think in the second half, the focus needs to be on execution, getting ready for your next game and playing the kids. There's lots of guys in this deep, deep Ottawa roster that deserve the chance to play, that practice every week and, and uh, are on the sidelines. They need to get into this game uh, because I think the matchups are, are favorable and I think that the, it's a good experience for them. They're going to be the future star players uh, for, for the Outlaws. Ottawa's done well in this first half. Mike Lee with four goals. Uh, we've seen some stellar play from Nick Boucher, both offensively and defensively. Do you think that these guys, some of these guys that don't get a lot of playing time during the regular season because guys are healthy and guys are in the lineup, are they taking advantage of this opportunity? Absolutely, and I think whenever you get guys like Jeff Bevan or Laurent Lo Loiseau, they get a chance to come into the lineup. We can see Laurent there right now sitting next to Nick. When he gets a chance to be on the line with Nick, Nick provides that security blanket. Play hard defense. If he get, beats you deep, I'm back there to help you out. And Nick's padding his own stats, but he allows those guys to play with the confidence. And I think uh, mixing the veterans with some of the younger players in the second half is going to be very good for team building. Keith Harris Stadium, the old doll here at MNP Park on the campus of Carleton University. We're going to be going down to field level in Mike Nellis in just a few moments, but let's talk about the success of the Ottawa Ultimate Community and what, where its beginnings were, Steve. I mean, I remember going to tournaments in the late 80s, and that was... 10 years or 20 years beyond when the game began, and that's the first I'd seen it. Yeah, well, when, when you want to talk about fundamental things that happened uh, in the Ottawa Ultimate scene, it was probably the community getting together and building Ultimate Parks Incorporated, which is a 19-field facility. Unbelievable that a community, uh, you know, a small community could get together, buy shares, allow them to buy the land, develop the land to have top top uh, field facilities. And from that, all the success is mounted and why it's such a big and successful league now. Indeed. Mike Nellis is ready at field level. Let's go downstairs. 
Nice. Thank you very much, Dan. Here with Auto Outlaws coach John Haig. After the first half, your team is up 14 to 5. What have you guys done right in that first half? Uh, I think we've done a good job of pressuring them with our defense. We get down on our poles and pressure their one or two key handlers, force them to make some hard throws. In conditions like this, if we can take away their main guys, we're going to get the disc from them. Now, obviously, the question I want to ask you about is the cold. And I can see you've got a couple layers on. There are Here different players on the field during the game with different layers on. Like, what, what's, what's, what's different when you're playing in, in conditions like this? When it's cold, every throw is just a little harder. Every catch is a little harder. You just got to focus a little, a little more on the fundamentals to make sure we keep the disc moving. And, uh, and keep our offense flowing. And what about the wind? It, the wind is really oh, gusting like here uh, during this game. It's pretty strong uh, upwind, downwind. So we just got to make sure that, you know, when we've got the wind at our backs, we're taking our shots towards the end zone, not giving them a short field to work with. And, uh, and, and take any free pass that's there. It's not easy to complete passes. So as, when you have a free one, you got to take it because you might not get an easy one later. You've almost got a 10-point lead going into the second half. What's the message to your team to keep this lead intact when you, it is really a big one? We just got to keep the pressure on. We've got to keep keep getting down on the poles and pressure pressure their handlers, make sure we keep getting the disc back. And on offense, just keep moving with our legs. There's, there's, you don't want to get complacent and, and, and take it easy. We just want to keep working with our legs downfield to make sure we keep getting open. Lastly, you guys, in order to qualify for the playoffs, you've got to win out pretty much. So so nice for, for the uh, for, for the end of the year, what's the message to the guys? Uh, you know, is it just take it a one game at a time type of thing? That's all we can do. We just win the game we have in front of us and uh, hopefully get a win today, move on, look forward to our next game, and hopefully get a win then as well. Thanks, John. Thank you. That is the Ottawa Outlaws coach, John Hag. We are going to take a break and return with continued coverage of the Ottawa Outlaws. They lead the Philadelphia Phoenix 14 to 5 at halftime on Rogers TV. I used to imagine I was going to be a lawyer or a race car driver. I was going to have a really big family, and every year we would go on a trip. I'd have this nice house where I'd live with all my cats, and I'd have all the same friends. When I was a kid, I used to dream I'd do so much. I couldn't wait to grow up. Support the Youth Services Bureau of Ottawa today. Head to downtown Bank Street on June 17th and 18th for Glow Fair. Free concerts by Juno Award winners Dragonette and Keys and Crates. The Silent Disco. Nine city blocks of fun. Visit glowfairfestival.ca. Hi, I'm Kyle Waddell and I'm a co-op student here at Rogers TV. I really enjoyed this co-op placement because all the people you got to meet, they're so welcoming, as well as the new experiences such as covering 67's games or being a reporter for High School Sports Zone. It's all a big new experience. I want to be a reporter because with High School Sports Zone, I got to learn how to like properly write reports and cover games properly. I would definitely recommend this program at Rogers TV. Every child dreams about the future. They dream big. They dream bold. But for millions of kids, their dreams are under siege. There are over 60 million displaced people in the world. More than half are children. Together, we have the power to help. World Refugee Day is June 20th. You can help them dream again. Donate now at worldrefugeeday.com. Ottawa Experts, a weekly show that explores topics for your business, lifestyle, and expanding consciousness. Join me, Moni Dujeji, Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. on Rogers TV. What's live? We are a little spots. Fresco Picante, Tuesdays at noon. Welcome back to Keith Harris Stadium at MNP Park on the campus of Carleton University. It's the American Ultimate Disc League and your Ottawa Outlaws lead the Philadelphia Phoenix 14-5 at halftime. Dan Mooney alongside Steve Trainer and Mike Nellis. And Steve, uh, uh, when you think of the Ottawa Outlaws and you look at the lineup 
and the members of the team that are not in the lineup because of injury, I think the 14 points that they put up in the first half is pretty impressive. It is impressive, but we should uh, give credit to the fact that those players at the bottom of the depth chart for uh, the Ottawa Outlaws are pretty good at ultimate as well. And they have really shown today that they are capable and uh, able to play professional ultimate and play it at a high level against the Philadelphia Phoenix team that's been struggling this year. Philadelphia coming into this one without a victory this season. Figuring Ottawa, after losing for the first time in the franchise's history against Montreal last night, might have been ripe for the picket. Yes, and when we were talking to Philadelphia earlier today, we had to apologize for the cold and assure them that this is not usually the case. It's about 90 degrees here today. Um, and they were, well, we were hoping for a bounce back today, but they definitely struggled uh, with uh, offensive control. And they've been hucking the disc deep a lot, as we discussed. They, in the second half, they're going to have to work on the fundamentals of working the disc down. Even if they turn it over in their own end zone, they're going to want to start uh, having uh, some opportunities to score with nice passes. Nice crisp passes and short passes. Adverse conditions in that first half, but still a lot of highlights to uh, to take a look at. And yes, lots of uh, uh, amazing plays. Just a great play by Luke Phelan there to get the outlaws on a big roll. Uh, great defensive effort by Alex Arsenault, but Philadelphia with a great catch on the re reflect, the rebound. They had some good hammer throws all the way by Kyle Wells, but Ottawa continued to, to pull away from them. On the, uh, and in the second quarter, it was all Ottawa here. Uh, Ottawa with a, with a huge run, only giving up two points uh, in the second quarter and just making good decisions on transition. They get the disc back, and then they would make a nice throw to a wide open player. Mike Lee being the recipient of a couple of those. He's got four goals in the first half, and Stephen McGurr with a nice catch. And... We'll see in the second half. We'll see that the Outlaws continue to play some of the younger players, some of the less uh, used players, uh, in order to keep the, the bench uh, and the starters fresh for the next week's games. Because, as we said before, they got to win and run the table in order to make it to the playoffs. They're only in the second year of operations. The fans are very supportive of them. But it would be great for them to make it in their second year of play. Absolutely. John Haig has... Uh Liked what he's seen so far from a depleted bench of the Ottawa Outlaws, but let's see whether or not he gets the kids into the game, into the second half. They lead 14-5 at the break. Don't go anywhere, folks. The opening pull of the second half coming up after the break. for Wednesday's daytime where we will be joined with local honey producer honey mm. she'll be here and talking about honey from our region and we have Monic Warwick from Polo in the Park and some peeps from Global Shapers community. Do you call me honey there by the way? I did. Oh I like that. How about this we're talking engagement rings with Paul Perot that's fun no stress there and a mommy and me princess high tea Wednesday at 11 <laughs> with repeats at 2 5 and 11 cable 22. Hi, I'm Mackenzie Gray, host of High School Sports Zone. Each week, our crews go around the city to bring you the best highlights in Ottawa high school sports. Catch this show Friday at 6 p.m. only on Rogers TV. Hi, I'm Mark Sutcliffe. Join me for Talk Ottawa on Rogers TV. We talk about the topics that matter to you, the issues that are developing right here in your community. We speak directly to the newsmakers and the experts. Talk Ottawa on Rogers TV. So why volunteer at Rogers TV? Well, it's fun, exciting, and challenging. You can develop practical, hands-on skills in TV production, make new friends, and have fun, all while giving back to your community. For a few hours a week, you can be part of a great team making great local television. Want to find out more? Get in touch with us at RogersTV.com. Make your mark and find a new passion as a Rogers TV volunteer. I used to imagine that I was going to be a lawyer or a race car driver. I was going to have a really big family and every year we would go on a trip. I'd have this nice house where I'd live with all my cats and I'd have all the same friends. When I was a kid, I used to dream I'd do so much. I couldn't wait to grow up. Support the Youth Services Bureau of Ottawa today. 
I'm Lorraine Sommerfeld. Join me on the Lemonade Car Show as we answer your consumer protection and automotive questions. The Lemonade Car Show brought to you by Omvic, Wednesday at 9 p.m. on Rogers TV. No maker, no clothes. And we are back here at MNP Park on the campus of Carleton University. Mike Nellis here at field level with Sam Morgan, the coach of the Philadelphia Phoenix. In the second half of halftime here, you could call it that, as uh, we uh, enter this part with uh, your team down 14 to 5. Sam, what does your team have to do in the second uh, half to come back? Uh, well, I was telling them during the first half to try to stop making the stupid mistakes. Uh, we'll see if they listen to me this week, but um, it, it's hard. You know, the win is a big factor, and overcoming it is something that we have to prove to ourselves first and to the other team second. So a lot of the mental mistakes cut down on that, and I think uh, we should be more competitive the second half. Is it hard to play two games in two different cities uh, two days in a row because that's what you guys did coming from Toronto yesterday to Ottawa today. The weather was much different. It was 30 degrees down in Toronto, and now you're near zero here. So yeah, it, it's, it's got to be different. It is different. It's certainly a unique experience playing in professional ultimate, but it's certainly not an excuse considering Ottawa and Montreal and Toronto do it early part in the season all the time visiting us down in the east so it is a challenge and it is a mental and more of a physical challenge to overcome but it's not unexpected and with a shorter bench people will stay looser they play a lot more and hopefully have a lot more fun actually on these trips and a little bit more enjoyable so it has its issues and challenges but it's uh, uh, a welcoming challenge. Thanks, Sam. No, no problem. Thank you, Mike. Sam Morgan is the coach of the Philadelphia Phoenix. We now send things upstairs to Dan Mooney and Steve Trainer. Dan. There you see Mike Lee, four goals in that opening half, leading Ottawa to a 14-5 lead to begin this second half. And I didn't think it possible, Steve Trainer, but it, it appears the wind has freshened. Uh, it's hard to believe. I'm just so glad that we are in the comfy confines of this uh, this media booth because doing it uh, in El Fresco would uh, would be would be pretty tough today. It's 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 quite cold, and uh, and we'll look to see how Ottawa can play with uh, that refreshing wind at their back. Kinley G for Carl Wazo to open up the second half. Wazo finds Matt Berg. Wazo. Looking for Keelan Way, that too far, another turnover. Fortunate turnover there. Matt Berg showing you, he's getting a rare offensive point here and showing you what he can do. Got great hands. <laughs> another turnover here now. Leon Foret, no. The overhand in, and Keelan Way makes it 15-5. Excellent play uh, by the Outlaws there. Uh, Coach Hag putting out some of his uh, stalwarts out there to get that first point and uh, to get the, the second half on the right start. They get a turnover quickly on the end zone line and Forrest No, who's usually a receiver in the end zone, picks it up and makes a nice pass over the top to Keelan Way with great hands. Keelan Way, he's been uh, a star for this team the, the last two years of existence, so it'll be interesting to see how much he plays in the second half. Uh, it's important to have those guys uh, that, that are sort of positive externalities for the rest of their uh, teammates on the field. As we discussed, it's good to have veterans mixed in with the younger players, but if you're Coach Hag, maybe Keelan is kind of that star player that you don't want to see get hurt in a cold day like this, so you're going to monitor his minutes and maybe if you feel the need to shut him down you shut him down and you save him for the next game yeah when every game is a must win another turnover by philadelphia and that might be one of the stupid mistakes that sam morgan alluded to in his interview with mike nellis at the half the hard part about stupid mistakes is sometimes very hard to correct them uh, instantaneously uh, otherwise you wouldn't be making them so on, we've seen a couple already to start off the second half here they just got to keep playing. They got to keep playing, kind of keep working together, and they need that communication. Pass intercepted. Arsenault for Brotman. Brotman. Little overhand. Colin Froats comes down with it, or Craig Froats rather, and 
Nice pass inside for Nick Boucher. And Ottawa continues their winning ways here at MNP Park this afternoon. Well, the man they call Frogger, he gets up there and leaps in there and then makes a nice grab and puts it into Nick Boucher for the score. This is a heck of a first game for uh, Craig Froats to play his first game in, uh, in nearly two years. He's, uh, he's just stepping right up there and making cuts. He's got a lot of confidence and he seems to, that his throws are uh, have a little bit more spin on them than some of the other players, which makes him a lot easier to, to throw him longer distances. So he's off to a good start. And uh, Nick Boucher looks to, like he's going to continue to play in this uh, second half as well and help anchor the defense. Ottawa putting some impressive runs together in this one. They've had a, th a one, a two, a three-point run, a four-point run, a five-point run, and currently on a five-point run. Great pull, but it just can't stay out of bounds, unfortunately. I think the, the, the strategy by Andy Corey to throw it high in the middle of the field and have it drop and, and, and then, uh, you know, kind of go on the ground deeper is, is probably the best strategy here today. Even the best throws high in the air are going to go out of bounds on uh, for Bricks. Carter going deep. Kenny Wells went up, got bumped. And Russ Nichols took an elbow into the head, too. So I guess both got dumped. No harm, no foul. No harm, no foul. Ottawa going with the huck. Here's Laurent Wazeau. Had a hand on it, but was his concentration may have been interrupted by Pavel Kavarovayev. It's going to be really exciting to see what what becomes of Laurent Wazeau. He's got the he's got the great uh, bloodlines. His brother is a is an incredible player at the highest level. He's really emerging, and it'll be interesting to see what his ceiling is in the sport if he's as committed as his brother Carl. Oh, great layout there to keep it alive by Carter, and another layout there by Lou. Forced back to Frank Harris. That one sailing into the hands of Carter for the goal. Yeah, some of the, be the better plays for Philadelphia have revolved around uh, Ken Wells and, uh, and Matt Carter. They have uh, really kind of been uh, key players whenever Philadelphia seems to be moving the disc well. And we've seen Carter make some really, really good throws into the win today. Uh, his left-handed backhand huck is is, is very, very good, but on that play, he was up the field. He was very motivated to get the score and get this team off the schneid. They, they had allowed Ottawa to go on quite the roll there to finish off the second quarter and start the third. So, Hunter, uh, we have uh, Carter doing what, what uh, leaders do, and that's really stepping up with a little bit more effort in order to, to, to break the, the schneid. Yeah, and I guess as Matt Carter goes, so do the Philadelphia Phoenix. Yes. And as we discussed uh, sort of earlier in the game, they're missing, uh, when you look at their team leaders uh, in terms of stats, they're missing four or five of them today. So having those guys, had those guys uh, been in the lineup, it would have given them a chance to really shock the world here with uh, Derek Alexander and Ken Alexander, some other key players out of the lineup for Ottawa for various reasons. So it, it uh, you know, missing those top four guys when you're a fledgling team that's uh, struggling to, to get your first win of the year, it's, uh, it's, it's a really tough for, for Philadelphia, but there's no excuses from this team. Left from coach on down, they're not making excuses. They're excited to be on the road. They're excited to be playing professional ultimate. And another violation, so Kevin Liu is going to have great field position about five yards out here to try and get Philadelphia. Another one, but... They run into problems. Devin Foster couldn't handle the disc. Ottawa has possession. Keelan Way bumped. Contact infraction. Another interception. McGurr. For Brian McGurr. McGurr forced back for Nardelli. Nardelli plays that one all the way back for Kevin Liu. Philadelphia hemmed inside their own territory. Moving out now, Stephen Shaw. 
Shaw forced to play it back. Devin Foster moved that over Nardelli. Nice little underhand all the way down. Great grab for the point. Wow, that is a, uh, a positive uh, happening for Philadelphia. If Nardelli, who's one of the more exciting young up-and-comers on the team, can play uh, tough defense on Carl Loiseau, if he can be a guy deep that they look to throw it to, and he can make big hucks like that, you're going to have uh, somebody that, that you can really build upon. So very, very nice play for Philadelphia. That's got to make Coach Morgan very happy about that. And a nice catch in the end zone as well uh, by Philadelphia. Zach Eskin, the recipient of that point that is Philadelphia's first consecutive point of this game. First consecutive point of this game, and it exceeds their total from uh, last night's uh, loss against Toronto. So they're on the up and up. Nothing but good this. things from, from here on out. Keelan Way. Another turnover. Pass too low for Carl Wiseau. Lowy. Move that to the far side for Morgan. Sam Morgan. Flip that one up. And another turnover. Mike Lee. Nice little flip for Nichols, Ross Nichols. Force back, Hogel for Laurent we or Carl Wazo. Apparently it's a pick call. The weather is really incredible today for, for a, a mid-June day. Oh, Keelan Way with the beauty catch on just an absolutely perfect toss from Carl Wazo. Dardelli not out there to cover Loizo on that play, and he uh, punishes the Philadelphia Phoenix by throwing a deep car, uh, Keelan Way. And we've seen that all season from those two guys. It's just a little bit more impressive whenever you have to factor in the wind, which, as you said, is, is still going strong right now. It's a good throw, and uh, Keelan just makes up a lot of time and space with his cuts, and he's able to grab that. So, as I was saying, the, the weather is quite a factor because you've got half the players on the sideline. You don't know if they're out of the game. They're all wearing jackets to try and stay warm here. Uh, but uh, hopefully, uh, Coach Hag will be able to cycle through as many guys as possible. And you've got a 10-point lead here now. It's a, there's uh, definitely no excuse not to see guys like Jeff Bevan or uh, Lance Blackstock a little bit more often in the second half. Kevin Liu. Lou inside. Lovely throw by Foster, but just too far for Stephen Shaw. And there's still six minutes and 20 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Connor Brotman. Craig Froats inside Boucher. Nick Boucher. Boucher, that pass blocked. Another turnover. Arsenault touches the disc down. Stephen Shaw will put it back into play. Shaw looking deep. And again, too far for the intended receiver, Kenny Wells. So we've got uh, Craig Froats uh, handling, being one of the primary handlers on the defensive side here. And we also see Cooper Brotman getting a lot of disc time in this game. That disc rose just as it got to the hands of Lance Blackstone and he could hang on. Here's Philadelphia now. Throw inside, back outside. Here's Stephen Shaw. Philadelphia looking to score once again, and they do. Big point for Philadelphia here. They're continuing to build up the credibility and respect of the team here, and they're really playing with some pride in the second half. 
couple of turnovers there by both sides, uh, but it was closer to the Ottawa end and a couple of quick passes. I think I just, uh, I'm, I'm interested to see uh, the fact that Cooper Brotman, who uh, has been playing more and more as uh, the season has rolled on, he definitely played in the last home win against Montreal. He was a factor playing some uh, some pivotal defensive uh, plays here. He seems to be playing uh, quite a bit as a handler uh, in lieu of some of the, the people that are missing uh, in this game. And uh, he's, he's definitely got some skills. He comes from the vaunted Carlton Ravens program, which originally used to be called the Carlton Chess Club. So just to show you <laughs> how how the uh, ultimate program has uh, has has changed. I mean, it went from being uh, a scourge on the on the campus to being opened welcomely as a as a club uh, team, and that's that's what you love to see happening over a ten year period. Just just great to see that we've gone from not being legally able to use the name to being a, a member of the the club system. In and out of the hands of Matt Berg on a nice great effort by Berg and a great throw by Keelan Way too, and it really looked effortless. Carter, Lowy for Carter. Matt Hogel on him very quickly. Eric Liu for Carter once again. Hogel on him again. Carter still looking to find an open player. He finds Lowy. Lowy for Roberts. Roberts, Lowy inside. Walls. Kenny Wells down for Carter. He's got it. Ten yards out. Eric Liu. Liu looking into the end zone. Ken Wells has it. Wow. So Eric Liu, the man they call Nintendo on the team, makes a nice throw here, but it looks like there might be a call on the play. Are they awarding the point? Yes, they are. Yes, it looks like they were in the point. But uh, you know, this, when you talk about when you're watching at home, depending on your on your level of, of knowledge of the game here, it's sometimes it's the game within the game. So the force there was to the uh, flick side, except for uh, number 44, Matt Carter, who was being guarded by Matt Hogel. And uh, Ottawa made a conscious decision, either that or Hogel completely blew the coverage the entire way up the field. But it was a, an intention that we will force everybody else to the flick side. But they respect uh, Carter, who's left-handed, his backhand so much that they allowed him to, to break them freely underneath for shorter gains rather than uh, throw something into the wind because he's the, been the only guy that's kind of showed his ability to throw into the wind. So very good play for Matt Carter. He wasn't able to throw the big huck, but he was able to make some continuation plays and some nice grabs and helps lead to that goal. And when you think about taking positives from something, Woo! Sam Morgan, the head coach of the Philadelphia Phoenix, can take a positive out of the fact that at this point in the third quarter, Philadelphia leads 4-3. Disc sails, goes up. Arsenault goes up and comes down with it. Bevan now. Bevan all the way down. Arsenault after it. Can't come up with it, but Wazo gets it. Carl Wazo into the end zone for Russ Nichols. What a play. You got to feel good for the kids here. Jeff Bevan with a big old huck deep here. He's got lots of confidence with the guys he's throwing to. Alex Arsenault, everyone thinks he's going to get it, but the win takes it. Carl Loisel finishing in the play. Never a bad time to catch the disc and never a bad time to finish the play, and he does that. He makes the catch and a nice continuation play before Philadelphia can get down. Gut-wrenching for Philadelphia. As you said, they were, had been outscoring Ottawa in this half, and it looked like they almost had a turnover there, but Alex Arsenault with that catch in space in, in tight quarters, and uh, so they weren't able to score an extra point. Instead, Ottawa ties it up in the, in the third quarter, scoring 4-4. Uh, Second of the afternoon for Russ Nichols. And Ottawa now with a nine-point advantage once again. Nice pull here. All the way down to the dead line. 
McGurr for Matt Carter. Cooper Brotman all over him. Connor Brotman, rather, that disc is well out. So, another one of those punt attempts that uh, we may were, not have worked out as well. We were in what we like to call Callahan country there. That was at the back of the end zone, and one bad throw caught by uh, an Ottawa outlaw player would have been a, an instant point for, for the outlaws. Oh, Lance Blackstock goes under it and grabs it. Lance Blacks, uh, Blackstock, who uh, is a proud member of the OC Transpo uh, team, he, he drove the bus there today uh, on that, that play. When we see in the replay here, it's kind of, he's just a really, really talented receiver. And when he's, he's looked at uh, to score in the end zone, he's got very good hands. And uh, big goal for him. Nice to see him get in the lineup and have a chance to score here. Lance Blackstock. Always got the good good uh, celebration there. It was a bit of a, a muscle pose there after that score. We saw him a couple of years ago, Steve, in the Okua finals, and just such a tremendously impressive athlete. Yes, just, and you know, at that time he was about 19 years old and just, you know, respectively wiped the floor with whoever he was marking up against him. And, uh, you know, now he's playing pro ultimate. He's a little bit older, a little bit stronger. And, uh, you know, he's when he gets his chance to play, he, he makes a difference. He's very talented. Lowy moves that one in. Another long huck. And brought down there. Very nice backhand huck into the end zone there. That's Sam Pizik that came down with it, wearing number 07 for Philadelphia. Yeah, definitely uh, definitely some, some moral victories here in this uh, uh, second half so far for Philadelphia. They came out, they, the coach had some, some choice words for them, I'm sure, at the halftime. Uh, and you know, in the interview uh, with us, he, he said that you know they got to stop making the super stupid mistakes and they got to start capitalizing. Well, after a couple of hiccups early on in the third quarter, we've seen this team being able to score on the uh, on the turnovers, and uh, they're making some nice plays, throwing to open guys, and the open guys are running it down and catching it, even with the wind in their face. Ottawa leads at 20 to 10. Or 19 to 10, excuse me. Here's Carl Wazell. Kinley G, Mike Lee. Leon Forêt, no. For Kinley G, Kinley G, Mike Lee into the end zone. Mike, Matt Berg couldn't catch up to it. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, it's, it's definitely tough uh, for, to read that pass. That was a backhand, a quick backhand transition into the to the uh, forehand side. And Matt Berg, as a receiver, had a tough time reading that with the wind uh, playing havoc as well. Zach Eskin. Roberts, the assistant coach, out there now for Philadelphia. Great D there by Mike Lee. Picked up by Keelan Way. Mike Lee turns around, grabs it. I think Mike Lee has taken it personal that we haven't had him as one of the players to watch to start off. I think he's he's gunning for that player of the game here. He's, he has not stopped. He had a strong first half. And then he's continuing to play well in the second half as well. It was a good box out on that play, and he ran it down on a, on a throw that stayed up in the air. And a good defensive play by Mike Lee as well. So the double happiness for Mike Lee. Gets the D, scores in the end zone. Now what we saw from Philadelphia there was kind of an interesting point. It was, uh, they had man-to-man -man defense uh, and they in the, in the front on the handlers, but they were playing zone in the back. And uh, there's a couple of different fun nicknames for that. We call it sometimes the North Bay zone, 
or we call it uh, business in the in the front and party in the back. So uh, you know, there's there's all kinds of uh, funny colloquial expressions that we use in Ultimate to explain junk zones that are part man and part zone. Lowy with the long huck once again, looking for Karavayev. Couldn't get it. Getting their chances though now, they're, they're throwing to people. Realistic throws are being made here now as opposed to just punting it. Blackstock having to wait for a jump ball. O'Brien comes up with it. Here's Brotman. Brotman into the end zone? No, not yet. Laurent Loiseau makes the catch right at the goal line. No, he didn't make the catch at all, and he doesn't like the call. Whoa. From sound, I think that was down. What a catch by Matt O'Brien just a couple of seconds before that, just in a, in a big crowd, gets up there, and he shows he's got some good athleticism. And a timeout called. Philadelphia calls it with 15.6 remaining here in the third quarter and maybe just get one score before the break and take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. It's a dedicated crowd that's coming uh, out here tonight. We're seeing a lot of uh, players uh, that are uh, playing in the league and supporting it here. And we look at the team leaders for the Philadelphia Phoenix. A lot of these guys missing Greg Strauss, 15 goals. Uh, Kyle Wolf with 19 assists and defensive turnovers created. Kyle Strauss and Kevin Venos with seven each. All of these guys are out of the lineup today for, for personal reasons. There was a big wedding uh, that's going on. And uh, unfortunately, uh, so uh, Philadelphia has had to play these last two games this weekend without the help of their statistical leaders and uh, obviously their on-field leaders. So they, they're feeling it, but they're not making any excuses. They want to go out there. They want to play the best that they can. And uh, they've they've given the Ottawa fans uh, something to to watch and to cheer for in the sec uh, second half. They played a lot better already, and uh, they've they've doubled their output uh, from the from the first half. 17.5. Now, as the clock had been readjusted from 15.6, Philadelphia has the disc. The time running out here in the third quarter. It's uh, like classic, uh, you know, two-minute drill in, in football. You've only got 17 seconds left here. The disc is, will start. Only, the, it'll only start whenever it's checked in here. Uh, but you want to make the first pass underneath and hopefully lead to another, another pass deep. Unfortunately, not able to connect, but that was the strategy. One quick pass underneath, followed by, by a big huck to try and score. Clock stops. Change of possession. And they're going to let it run out. So, they led by nine at the half and the lead is 10 after three quarters of play your ottawa outlaws out in front of the philadelphia phoenix you're watching the american ultimate disc league and professional ultimate right here on rogers tv America, part of the Rogers Super Sports Pack. Catch all the group matches included with your subscription from June 3rd to 14th. Order through your remote or call 1-888-ROGERS-1 today. Such abundance everywhere you look, everything from the landscape to the river to the rocks to the sound of the rapids. We have a very beautiful life here in Ottawa. Play four games of bingo from the comfort of your own home each Monday at 7 p.m. for your chance to win money from our $2,000 regular bingo or $5,000 super bingo night. Kiwanis TV Bingo, Mondays at 7 p.m. on Rogers TV. My name is John Williamson, and I've been volunteering for Rogers TV for about six years now. One of my favorite experiences with Rogers TV is being able to work on some live Ottawa 67's broadcast, whether it's play-by-play -play or hosting, 
Every time I go out, there's just a great crew of people to work with, and it's a really great experience for me. I'd absolutely recommend volunteering for Rogers TV for anybody, whether you want to get into the industry or not. It's just a lot of fun every time you get to go out, and you really get to meet some great people and really be happy with the work that you're doing. Head to downtown Bank Street on June 17th and 18th for Glow Fair. Free concerts by Juno Award winners Dragonette and Keys and Crates. The Silent Disco. Nine city blocks of fun. Visit glowfairfestival.ca. We're ready to eat on Ottawa Eats. Make sure you check it out on Rogers TV. Welcome back to MNP Park on the campus of Carleton University. Your Ottawa Outlaws lead 20 to 10 after three quarters of play. In the opening pull of the fourth quarter about to begin. Dan Mooney alongside Steve Trainer, Mike Nellis at field level. It's been a pretty great afternoon with the exception of possibly the weather. But as far as ultimate goes, the Outlaws have, uh, have done it and done it well. Yeah, I mean they've 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 definitely given their fans a, a good night a good day of ultimate so far after three quarters. They've got the lead, which is the most important thing. They're on a mission, on a mission to win all the remaining games in the regular season and sneak into the playoffs. And uh, those fans, those loyal fans that have bared the the weather today, have been treated to some great '80s hair band music, which has been the theme <laughs> today. And they've been treated to uh, some some good plays in ultimate, and it maybe hasn't been. You know, a Picasso it hasn't been the most beautiful ultimate, but it's been a tough slobber knocker game, and, and Ottawa's uh, come out on top so far, and hopefully they'll be able to finish strong here. <laughs> they were waiting for it to try and come back in. John Henkel just watched it. I love it. I love a team that's, that's willing to have some fun regardless of the score, and that looks like what Fe uh, Philadelphia Phoenix is at this point. And they, you know, they, they, they knew the fans were into that, and uh, there was quite a bit of a chuckle from both the, t the players and the, and the fans on that. So huge disadvantage not being able to put the pull in, in bounds. You're able to get it right at the, uh, at the midway mark here. And uh, you're going to get the disc right into the hands of Matt Carter, and he can put it. And he does. Great D there, Luke Phelan. That's got to feel really good for Luke Phelan. He had a couple of miss, near miss Ds uh, against game against Montreal a couple of weeks back. That was no mistake about that one. Great D by him. Disc sails over the head of Connor Brotman. Or Cooper Brotman, excuse me. Another long huck down the field. And Philadelphia just, they're not running out of wind yet. They've been trying the huck fest the entire afternoon unsuccessfully but that's a lot of running but that is that's classic philly philly ultimate they have some athletes that will just run you right into the ground they just uh you know a bunch of guys that are just willing to just they love the long game they love love putting it up there and and here it comes again and a, despite a great effort by brian mcgurr that one goes incomplete just definitely tough to defend, though. I mean, if the wind wasn't as much of a factor, we originally thought it would be advantage uh, for Philadelphia. But based on their deep huck game, having this wind has, is not uh, to their advantage because their, their guys are definitely getting open on the connections uh, uh, deep. But just there's no uh, the wind is taking away the ability to, to make those passes at a high level of execution. Can he run under it? Yes, he can. Arsenault, the forehand, he's got Boucher down the field, but Brian McGurr interrupts with the interception.
Carter, all the way down into the hands of Brian McGurr. He does it at one end and goes and scores at the other. I appreciate Nick Boucher's sportsmanship on that. After the catch is made, he gives him a nice tap to say, hey, if you can come down with that, good on you. He hustles back, Boucher trying to pick it up the man, but a nice catch. And uh, that that's not an easy pass to run down. Wind is playing havoc with it, but uh, and uh, it's a great catch and uh, a good start. Two minutes go went by on that point, so quite a few turnovers here. We see some people in the crowd. Mr. Pete Knowles, one of the, the legends of Ottawa Ultimate, walking by our, our, our booth right now. It's You're like the mayor. Oh, uh, no. If, I, if I'm the mayor, uh, then Pete Knowles has to be in some sort of high-ranking position above me. Just such, such a dominant player for so long. And uh, I love that uh, those guys come back and watch the young guys, and they don't watch it with any sort of animosity. They're just happy to see that the game has progressed to the level that it has. Folks, you have no idea. Steve can't walk three feet without running into somebody he knows. It makes me feel like Dan Mooney and all the other sports that he does. <laughs> Leon Forte, no. Oh, great grab by Nichols to keep it alive. Matt Hogel. Hogel, forced back. Or Morgan. Oh, that's Jeff Bevan, excuse me. Nichols. Keelan Way looking into the corner for Leon Foret. No. And no is the answer to that equation. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I just love that pass by Keelan Way. It was such a good decision. It was so, uh, you know, he and uh, Leon Forrest Noah played together for so long. They knew what each uh, other wanted to do on that play. And just for, unfortunately, they couldn't complete it due to the win. But some good offensive flow from Ottawa on that play. The hammer right over top. Nice play. Here's Stephen Shaw. Tries to get it out. Frank Harris can't come down with it. But a violation against Ottawa will move the disc up 10 yards and, more importantly, give possession to the Phoenix. Well, that was some good defense by uh, Kinley G on that. He might have got the hand block on it, but there was some contact. Ref right there to make the right call on that play. Harris for Shaw. Shaw comes down with it. Big presence. Ogle on him. Harris back. Sends that one into the hands of Carl Wiseau. Ottawa back the other way. Keelan Way for Hogel. Hogel still with it. For Wiseau. Wiseau into the end zone and Brought down by Matt Hogel. There's a perfect example of the give and go. That's right, and if you're, if you're an unselfish player and you're willing to give the disc off to a talented player like Carl Loiseau and get into the end zone, he's gonna get the disc right back to you. And great job by Matt Hogel on that play. He's played a lot of minutes for the Outlaws this year. It's, uh, it's good to see him be able to get on the scoreboard here. Uh, on the... Uh, on the actual, on, the, on a funny note uh, involving Keelan Way, he was the MVP of our last Rogers broadcast against the Montreal Royal. And uh, we were very close. Our, our booth was very close, uh, of course, to, uh, the, uh, to the fans. And we had someone listening in on, the, on the, uh, his speech afterwards, uh, close to us. And then she it was a lady that put her hand on my, on my back, and I leaned back, and it was Keelan's mom. She asked if Keelan thanked, I had the headphones on so I could hear the interview. She asked him if we uh, if he thanked his mom for uh, for for <laughs> in the in the interview and of course I was uh, between a rock and a hard place so I just lied and said I'm sure he did but uh, yeah so make sure whoever does the interview today maybe it'll be Mike Mike Lee maybe it'll be uh, Nick Boucher make sure you thank your mom Mike Lee certainly would warrant some consideration for player of the game five goals for Ottawa. Here's Carter. Dishes that off. Carter again. Tried to feed Ken Wells with the give and go, but that was blocked. Here's the hammer into the end zone, in and out of the hands of Eric Nardelli. Regardless of the home team, that would have gotten a huge 
uh, applause from the fans on that. That was a heat-seeking -seek hammer, and uh, there was a nice effort by Zardelli to Nardelli to catch that. Boucher looking deep. That one picked off by Brian McGurr. Tried to dish off to his brother Steven, but he couldn't hang on. Cooper Brotman, he's looking deep. Grab there, nice catch by Alec Arsenault for the point. Alex Arsenault, who was plucked out of Moncton a couple of years ago to play uh, in Ottawa, and uh, they've been so happy that uh, he has uh, made the trip up here and has played and been such a strong, reliable defensive presence. And when there is a transition, he's able to catch the disc. He's very good in the air as well. Uh, Carl Loiseau, one of his teammates, described him as one of, if not the most athletic guy on the team. So that's heady praise from a guy like Carl. And uh, I know that the praise from uh, his extends to uh, the coaching staff as well. He always gets uh, matched up against some of the more tougher players on the opponents uh, that the opponents can offer. And uh, he's, he's definitely done his job tonight to help uh, Ottawa with a comfortable lead. Philadelphia with 11 points. Last night, they didn't get a lot of reward offensively against Toronto, scoring only six. And you know, when they watch this, uh, this game, they'll actually see a couple of, uh, a lot of opportunities where they could have scored. It's not like they were completely uh, outdone by, you know, the other team just, just dominating them. Just, it's just execution. Stupid errors, as, uh, as Coach Morgan said at the halftime. Right D by Mike Lee. And the Ottawa offense goes to work now. Leading by 11, the hammer by Boucher into the hands of Luke Phelan. It's got to feel good for Luke Phelan. He is really stepping up with the additional playtime today. That's what we've seen for Luke for a long time. He just came into the league as an unstoppable deep cutter. Not necessarily the, to uh, the, the tallest guy, but very good, deep, great hands. Uh, and then he became a defensive captain in the Ottawa competitive system. Uh, really good pulls, really good uh, defensively in the terms of the matchups. And he's still got it. I mean, it's, uh, it's great to see guys that are in their 30s. So we here we have a, a, bo a board of uh, people that it's time to shine. So uh, number s uh, Laurent Loiseau, who's the brother of Carl Loiseau, who's number seven. We've got Jeff Bevan. Uh, and we've got Luke Phelan. So Wazo and Bevan are sort of younger stars. Luke Phelan is a guy uh, that is a former captain in the Ottawa competitive s system. He's been playing out the last two years, and he uh, continues to be uh, play at a high level right now for, for the Outlaws. Two goals for the Outlaws this afternoon for Luke Phelan. It's fantastic that uh, the coaching staff saw the opportunity to play some of the guys that don't, uh, like Bevan, like Loiseau, that don't get a chance to play as much. And they've seen lots of time, which is what you should be doing with the minutes that you have here in the fourth quarter. Blackstock coming under it. He's got it. Yeah, Lance Blackstock is uh, definitely a guy that you, uh, you definitely have to watch deep. He's so good in the air. And he's got the great celebrations that we're kind of waiting for. He's being really ho hum on this, but uh, we're watching a replay. He just got some real separation on his opponent here. Great separation and catches it in the end zone. Oh, nice scoop for the celebration on that. He's been uh, filling up the stats in the second half here. He's got at least a couple of points and he's been playing very good defense. That's the big difference for him. When we first saw him and he was dominating people, his strength was on offense. It was catching, being, being being very good at catching in the end zone. And the Outlaws are trying to convert him into using his athletic prowess as a defensive player because they need that. They need the game breakers. That's what they need in order to uh, start limiting uh, uh, opponents to under 20 points in games. They haven't done that yet uh, this season. They're hoping that that's going to happen uh, with a short amount of time left in the fourth quarter. It looks like that, that will be conceivable. And as the season moves along, they got to continue to score at a high level like they've done. Uh, but they also need to uh, play a little bit better defense moving down the stretch. That pulled just long. So that will give Philadelphia the brick. He 
into the hands of Stephen Shaw. Shaw for Eric Liu. Liu drops that off for Sam Morgan. McGurr, great layout attempt there by Shaw. And Philadelphia turned away once again. Steven McGurr out there on defense for Philly. Here's Nick Boucher. Boucher in and out of the hands of Loiselle. And a good defensive play there by Matt Carter. Loiseau was looking for the call there as the Philadelphia player went, th went through him a bit, but there was no foul, no contact. Uh, and I think the refs had the right call there. Carter now. All disc on that defensive play. All disc in his hand now. Nardelli has it. About four yards out, right on the sideline. Nardelli into the end zone, and Stephen McGurr has another goal for Philadelphia. The McGurrs, Nardelli, and uh, Carter can look back at this game and probably feel pretty good about the way that they've they've contributed. And as the rest of the team kind of evolves and gets a little bit better, uh, I think the Philadelphia has something that a nucleus definitely to work with here. I just have to compliment this visiting team, Philadelphia Phoenix. They have just not given up in this game. They have played as hard as they can, as long as they can. They have not shied away from going long and on the on the deep strikes. And uh, that's, that's a tribute to a, a team that's got a, a real cohesiveness. They, they like playing with one another. They know that they're in it for the long game. They're in it to be better in, in future seasons. And uh, I think I would be surprised if they are able to get their, their star players back that are away this week. They're able to pull out a, a win before the end of the regular season. At least you'd have to hope so. Well, Ottawa's next coming games are could prove to be very difficult with seven of their players heading off to the World Championships in London. That was a sweet pull from Frank Harris. He really uh, did a great job of using the win to his advantage there. Keelan Way. Carl Oiseau. All the way down. Nice catch. Mike Lee into the end zone. It floats on him. Into the hands. Oh, Bevan came up with the catch. His feet were in the end zone, but the disc ended up out of the end zone. That was interesting. <laughs> oh, here it goes up. Matt Berg gets up there for a bunch of Philadelphia players. Effort by Mike Lee and Jeff Bevan catches it and has the presence of mind to keep his feet in the end zone whenever he leans out to make that catch. And the call's good. They're call's gonna let good. the point stand. Jeff Bevan. I think they had to let that count just for style points. Come on. <laughs> Absolutely. So he talked about guys with an opportunity to shine. Jeff, ben Jeff, Jeff Bevan, excuse me. First, taking full advantage first game of the year so he's been on the roster i've seen him on the sidelines he's been the prototypical team guy uh, you know high five and cheering his team on helping on the sideline chatter and this is his opportunity to play today and he's made the best of it he got a nice goal there and we've seen him throughout the whole game and when you go out there with guys like kinley g keelan way you got to play with confidence and you got to be able to work within the system and, and uh, pick up on what they're doing. And he, he's done that. And then Coach Hag has rewarded him with some defensive plays as well. So good for him. 4.18 left to go. Ottawa with a 13 point advantage. Philadelphia starting out from. Their own end zone. Stephen McGurr. Stephen Shaw. Nick Boucher marking him closely. Into the hands. Devin Foster for Stephen Shaw. Back to Foster. All the way across for Eric Nardelli. Nardelli. Kept the disc down low. Ken Wells looking deep. There's Shaw, has it 12 yards out. And a reach in by Arsenal will give Philadelphia a much better field position. Mm -hmm. 
Timeout called by Philadelphia. They want to be strategic about this. They want to get the best players that they possibly can on the field. I see a real emergence from uh, from uh, one uh, Eric Nardelli. He's kind of we knew that Carter was going to be good, and he right off the bat, he and uh, and Ken Wells really stood out for the uh, for the team. But in the second half here, Eric Nardelli has uh, you know it's always interesting to see these promising prospects. So uh, Nardelli has said, said, give me the defensive assignment of, of covering Carl Loisel, who has over 30 goals this season in the league, and uh, on offense. Let me be the one to either throw it long or be a guy that uh, is going to be tasked with running deep on a lot of plays because there's been a lot of back and forth between uh, between both teams on, on the Huck game. So good on him to play so well in the second half, and it's just nice to see players uh, emerging and playing with such confidence. Look at the Ottawa Outlaws, Cooper Brotman. What they want to do here is they want to keep doing what they've been doing. They've, they've had pretty good, um, you know, set defensive plays here. Nick Boucher is, is uh, definitely quarterbacking uh, people around here, getting them in the right positions. But they have decided that they're going to uh, have an isolation play. Uh, Philadelphia has. And so uh, Ottawa is going to have Nick Boucher playing sort of center field to help out on that. Carter, great D there by Arsenault. Breaks it up right at the goal line. Cooper Brotman. Andy Corey. Corey has that one sailed. Wazell. Oh, and Blackstock had a chance to make the catch, and it slipped through his fingers. Nice steal there by Wazell. Looks like it's going to be called a strip on that play. But you got to love Laurent Loiseau's uh, aggressive play on defense. That's what you've got to need need to do in order to be uh, a, a game breaker and if you if you're a game breaker you get to play more so that's what he's he's trying to do out there he's trying to he create D's play hard defense great block there Nick Boucher there's a game breaker right there and another turnover boy the adrenaline must have been rushing through Nick Boucher after that play look at that layout and block wow chucks it down the field unfortunately for a turn right off the hop but you just, i mean nick is uh leads came into the weekend leading the team in uh in defensive turnovers created and we saw why that's just a good field awareness and willing to throw his, his body out there arsenal for cooper brotman brotman his pass intercepted by foster to shaw down the field John Hankel was able to get it to Wells. Wells to the outside, scooped up by Foster. Back for Ken Wells. Wells inside, Matt Carter. Carter down the sidelines, looking for Foster and despite the layout, can't come up with the catch. One thing we've seen here is uh, another Carlton product, uh, Cooper Brotman. He's been handling a lot today in the lieu of uh, the absence of some of the other players. He's he's of the players that have uh, sort of struggled on Ottawa with the with the win. He's he's kind of struggled a little bit. That wasn't uh, his fault, unfortunately. And very nice pass by Brotman, but a turn uh, for Arsenal there. <laughs> Philadelphia on offense. Carter sends that one out. Henkel, back for Wells. Wells, down low, inside for Foster. Foster with Cooper Brotman right there. Nice defense by Lance Blackstock and back the other way come the Outlaws. Blackstock made his way down the field immediately. And they should have got the disc to him immediately. There was a little bit of slowness on the transition there, and it's an advantage for the defense whenever you're slow getting getting started. 30 seconds left in this one. Ottawa's going to have their fourth victory of the year. There's the hammer into the hands of Nardelli. Nardelli into the end zone. Ankle comes up with it. 
nice little finish there for Philadelphia. It's been a tough afternoon and a tough weekend, but they, they have showed and this last play exactly the kind of hustle and determination that they're going to bring for the rest of the season here. Hammer over the top, caught by Nardelli, thrown out the space. Boy, Boucher was close there. Uh, and uh, so Henkel with, with a good grab. He's, a little, he's looking a little tired on that play. There was quite a few turnovers. I think that was uh, close to a three-minute play on, the, on there. So we've only got uh, about seven seconds to play, and we've got a, uh, a large uh, score differential. Expect Ottawa to make a couple of passes and run the clock out here. Or maybe they'll give the fans uh, something incredible to We'll see. There's the pull. Kinley G. He'll just run it out. And the Ottawa Outlaws take advantage of some inclement conditions and play some solid ultimate, solid offensive ultimate to defeat the Philadelphia Phoenix by a score of 25 13. Definitely some adversity today for Ottawa. They had like, quite a few players out of the lineup, including uh, Mr. Franchise himself, Derek Alexander. But uh, they were able to uh, win with some good play from uh, the offensive line, as you said, some efficient offense when they needed it. And a lot of guys stepped up and had their, their moment to shine today in front of the home fans, and they did that with a comfortable victory. And as far as player of the game honors are concerned, I think somebody's finally going to get some love. Yes, and uh, you know we're, we're very happy to, to say that Mike Lee is the player of the game today, and it is uh, something that we uh, we've we've expected for a long time because he's been so good all season. Just a consummate professional on the O line as a receiver and good hands, and he had some great tees today too. Mike Nellis is standing by with our player of the game, Mike Lee of the Ottawa Outlaws. Thanks a lot, Dan, and back here at field level with Mike Lee after a big win. Uh, for you guys against the Philadelphia Phoenix. Um, you know, in the situation where you guys need to win at this point to qualify for the playoffs, that's got to be a big one. Yeah, basically, we got to win everything out from here on out. Um, we lost a big one yesterday, but that just makes our home, our, our, our road a little bit harder to the playoffs, but it's still attainable. It's still attainable, and it, it, there's definitely going to be a lot of different variables in these games. One of the things is the weather today. Uh, you go from a Above 20 yesterday, it's almost at zero today. It's a it's a crazy turnaround, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. You just gotta adjust. You just gotta know what the weather's gonna be like. You gotta adjust your throws. You gotta adjust your cuts. Uh, you gotta adjust your defense, and you just gotta be on top of it. So, yeah, and I think we did pretty well with that. How much do you have to adjust your throws when the wind is gusting like this? Yeah, you just gotta put a lot of snap on it. You gotta you gotta put your inside out edge on it just so it doesn't trail off. Uh, it takes a lot of practice and, and, and it takes a lot of practice in the wind to throw that just so in game it's ready. You're missing the Alexanders today, a couple of key players and other guys stepped up and it seemed like uh, it paid off with a double digit win. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they're, they're definitely big parts of our team, but fortunately we have a lot of guys that can step up into the, those roles uh, if they're missing. So it's really good to have a, a deep roster like that. Thanks a lot, Mike. All right, thanks a lot. Mike Lee is our player of the game for the Ottawa Outlaws as they take a 25-13 to 13 win away from this game against the Philadelphia Phoenix. Our next broadcast of Ottawa Outlaws Ultimate is on July 2nd as they take on the New York Empire right here at NMMP Park at Carleton University. It's a 6 o'clock start on July 2nd. So that'll do it for us here from MNP Park. For Dan Mooney, Steve Trainer, and our entire Rogers TV crew, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.